Welcome to St. Stephen's Presbyterian Online. Our prayer is that God will bless you and speak to you during this service of worship. Let us pray. Father, we want to shout with the psalmist today. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy, for the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. He subdued, subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended in shouts of joy. The Lord amid the sounding of the trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to him a song of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the people of the God of Abraham. For the kings or shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Father, we are excited to praise and worship you, but we also bring our broken lives to you. We pray for your healing and forgiveness. We repent of the things that we've thought and done for the times when we walk to the other side of the road, when people are in need or we come across injustice and we stay silent. Thank you, Jesus, for your love and amazing grace. Amen. Today, St. Stephen's, I want to challenge you to lay your gifts and talents, your time and your possessions and finances at the foot of the cross. Everything we have is a blessing from God. We are simply looking after what really belongs to him. Father, fill us with gratitude, fill us with faith, fill us with generosity, fill us with a passion for making disciples and taking your gospel to the ends of the earth. Fill us with compassion for those around us who are hungry and jobless. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you for sending Jesus to this earth to walk among us, to do the work that you called him to do. Thank you for his sacrifice and the cruel cross for us. Thank you that he defeated death and that he sits at the right hand of the Father. Thank you for the way that you also call us to follow you and serve you, that you call us to make disciples of all nations, that you call us to be part of your mission team. Father, today we want to pray for the people who live and work and go to school in Rosettenville. We know, you know each one of them by name. We pray for all the churches in Resentful. May we be united in our mission to bring healing to those who are sick, to care for the prisoners and those who are in spiritual chains, to care for those who are weak, lonely, and disillusioned or depressed. We pray for those who are struggling with COVID, who are weak and suffering. We pray for those who have lost loved ones because of this pandemic. We pray for those who are sick in hospital. You know each one by name. We pray for your healing power. We pray for a quick and efficient rollout of the vaccine in our country. Father, we pray for the members of St. Stephen's family. We pray for those who are not well. We also pray for the friends and relatives of our members who are not well. You are a God who heals. You are a God who cares. You are a God who comforts. You are a powerful God who created the entire universe and every little atom and molecule. We know that you love us. May we love around those around us the way that you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. What is the difference between a vision, a mission, and a purpose? There's a joke that says, if you want to know the difference, you need to ask a baby boomer. Because companies pay consultants a lot of money to help them figure out what their vision, mission, purpose, and values are. And after all they, that, they need to come up with a strategy to, to achieve their vision, mission, and values. So my first question to all of you is, what is your life's mission? Is it to have a successful career? Is it to retire comfortably? Is your life's mission to change the world? Covey asked the question, what would you like people to write on your tombstone? Maybe your mission is to love your family with every fiber of your being. The second question I want to ask you this morning is, what is the official mission of St. Stephen's Presbyterian Church? Can anyone tell, tell me? Anyone from the session? This is the first Sunday after Ascension Day. So we all, we're still focused on that theme, but... One of the things that stands out from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts, is that Ascension Day is when Jesus says his parting words to his disciples before he literally floats up into the clouds. And his parting words are to give his disciples a mission. For three years he's been training his disciples, but now he's sending them on a mission that he has been training for. It's kind of like a bunch of rekis or contour soldiers, to use a term that South Africans understand undergoing extensive training, and now they're being sent out on their first mission. On Thursday, for those who weren't there, we unpacked the last chapter of Luke and the first chapter of Acts, and we saw the ascension through the eyes of Luke and those eyewitnesses that Luke had interrogated and were his sources. But today we're going to be look at the, looking at these events through the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Mark. The author of, of Matthew is thought to be Matthew the tax collector. Jesus came to his house and Matthew invites him to meet all his friends and Jesus has a meal with them. And Matthew decides to leave the tax collecting life behind and to follow Jesus. Matthew is also known as Matthew the Evangelist. The Gospel of Mark is named after the disciple who was called John Mark. 
which were his Jewish and Roman names. And he, like Luke and Matthew, is also known as John Mark, the evangelist. And the two passages we read today focus on the ascension of Jesus from two different people's perspectives. Their perspective is different. What they emphasize is different. Yet as we read through Acts and Luke, which we looked at on Thursday, or Matthew and Mark, which we looked at today, they all have the same themes running through the three Gospels and Acts. Let's dive in and look at the Matthew passage and then at the Mark passage. We're going to do a verse-by-verse -verse journey through Matthew and Mark this morning. So let's start with Matthew. In Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus says these words, I have, given, I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. When Jesus walked this earth, he was always submitting to the will of the Father. He did and said what the Father told him to do. In fact, in John, Jesus says the following, For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. You see, he is obedient to the Father. Also in John, Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing for himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. So he's saying that the Father and Son are in a partnership with each other. In Matthew, Jesus says, All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Philippians, Paul says, for this, reason, for this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, talking about Jesus. In Peter we read, Jesus is at the right hand of God, having gone into heaven after angels and authorities and powers had been subjected to him. There seems to be this language that describes Jesus as having been given authority as the Son of God over all living creatures, over angels, over powers, over the earth. What seems to be implied in verse 18 is that Jesus is saying, I am the king who has authority, who is sending you out on this mission, and therefore you go as my ambassadors, you go with my authority. In Matthew and Mark, there's a different emphasis regarding the mission that Jesus is giving his disciples. Matthew says, go to all people everywhere and make my disciples. Just as Jesus spent three years discipling the twelve and eventually the seventy-two, he's telling them to go out and do what he has modeled for them. He's sending them out as trainers. He's sending them out as mentors. Mark says, go throughout the world um, and preach the gospel to the whole human race. And this is what the disciples they did. They went to many different parts of the world, Turkey, Greece, Italy, Egypt, India. And wherever they went, they preached the gospel. And what is the gospel? The gospel is that God came and walked among us in the form of a man called Jesus. He died and rose again so that we can experience forgiveness and grace and have a relationship with the mighty, powerful God who created the universe. And that, my friends, is our mission too. We don't need to have a cons hire a consultant. We don't need to have a boss put out. We simply need to turn to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts. And when we read the mission that was given to the disciples, that mission is our mission. If you're a follower of Jesus, and that mission if you're a follower of Jesus. And that mission is the mission of St. Stephen's Presbyterian Church. And so St. Stephen's Presbyterian Church, do you accept this mission? Jesus goes on to tell them in both Matthew and Mark that wherever they go, that they are to baptize those new believers. These new disciples, once they've responded, once they've believed the gospel message, once they've signed up to become disciples of Jesus. And in Mark, Jesus says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. Are there any of you sitting here this morning who have not believed? Why? Who have not signed up to be a disciple of Jesus? Maybe you still have questions. Maybe you're afraid to take that final step. Take me out for coffee. Come and chat to me in my office. Let's talk about your questions. Are there any of you who have been not been baptized? For some of you, your parents baptized you when you were young. And they promised to disciple you. And now you need to make a decision to follow Jesus. Because just because your parents encountered Jesus and became followers of Jesus does not mean that you have had an encounter with Jesus. Does not mean that you are a disciple and a follower of Jesus. You need to make that decision yourself. Maybe Jesus is revealing himself to you this morning. Maybe Jesus is speaking to you this morning and he's saying, follow me. Get up and follow him. Just like Simon Peter and James and John did. Some of you have not been baptized or you have not stood in front of the congregation 
and shared your testimony of how God has changed your life in a confirmation service. Come and chat to me or one of the elders. We would love to give you that opportunity. The next thing Matthew and Mark record Jesus saying is this. Number one, teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. And then in Mark saying, simply preach the gospel. When last did you do a study through the words of Jesus in the gospel? Some Bibles have these words spoken by Jesus written in red. Have you ever re read everything Jesus said about this new kingdom, the kingdom of God? Have you read the sermons of Paul and Peter in Acts? As they explain the gospel to Jews and Gentiles. Have you studied the Old Testament and all the prophecies about Jesus? This book, from cover to cover, is about Jesus. Every psalm, every letter, every prophecy prepares us and points us towards Jesus Christ, the Savior that God promised in Genesis. Do you ever together, gather together with a group of people who are followers of Jesus and study the scriptures? When the disciples and Paul traveled the world on their various missionary journeys, they taught people what Jesus had said. They challenged people to obey Jesus. They preached the gospel message. And that is our message. Some of you have teaching gifts. If you've taught in a high school or a primary school, then you've got a teaching gift. If you do training for a living, then you have a teaching gift. Gather together a group of people, those who are followers of Jesus and those who are not yet followers of Jesus, and teach, just like Miranda did to so many here at St. Stephen's. This is your mission. Do you choose to accept it? Are you hungry to learn and grow? So does this mission scare you? Are you trembling in your seat? I could not possibly do any of this, Brendan. I'm afraid. I don't speak well. I'm too busy. If that is your response, then I'm really excited. Because Jesus chooses to use the weak and insecure and afraid people to be his messengers, to be his disciple makers to be his preachers of the gospel, to be his teachers of the scripture. Is he tapping you on the shoulder this morning? Is he calling you to make disciples or to preach the gospel or teach the scriptures? He is going to keep tap tap tapping. He's quite persistent. The best way to respond is, God, I don't think I'm the right person, but if you are with me, then I will go. In fact, Mo Moses says to God, unless you go with me on this journey to the promised land, I will not go. He promises to go with us. We don't have to do anything in our own strength. He promises to be with us until the very end of the age. Now, the final section in Mark was not in the earliest versions of Mark that we have. At some stage, someone added these words at the end of Mark's gospel. Maybe it was Mark himself, or maybe it was someone else. Believers will be given the power to perform miracles. They will drive out demons in my name. They will speak in strange tongues. They pick up snakes or drink poisons. They will not be harmed. They will place their hands on sick people who will get well. Some people question the validity of this last part of Mark. But if we read through the book of Acts, we see all these things happen. We see miracles. We see the apostles drive out demons. We see them speaking in strange tongues. The Corinthian church is spending so much time speaking in tongues that Paul has to write to tell them that prophecy is better when, we, when you are meeting together as a church, unless there's an interpreter. We saw, see Paul pick up a snake and he's bitten. And the islanders think he's going to die, but he does not. And then they think he's a God, but he tells them about Jesus and says, this Jesus has given us these gifts. Some disciples drank poison and were not harmed. We read about how the disciples placed their hands on the sick and people got well. This is your mission, St. Stephen's. Drive out demons and set those who are oppressed free. I wouldn't suggest picking up poisonous snakes and drinking poison just to test God, but God can do it if he wants to. Pray for the sick, lay hands on them. The elders should gather around them and anoint them with oil. In James chapter 5 we read, Is any of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. It's right there. This is your mission, St. Stephen's. If you choose to accept it, are you afraid? Did you say, drive out demons, Brendan? Yes, I did. But not in your power, in God's power. When last did you lay your hands and ask God to heal someone? When last did the elders of St. Stephen's pray for someone who's sick and anoint them with oil? This is your mission. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. He is the ruler of the kingdom of God. 
We read many scriptures about the reign of God. The Lord will reign forever. He will guard our Zion to all generations. Praise the Lord. In Psalm 146. In Psalm 93, the Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed and girded himself with strength. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. In Exodus chapter 15, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. In the New Testament, in 1 Timothy, who alone possesses immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion forever. It's a powerful kingdom, the kingdom of God. Jesus is ruling and reigning, a just king on the right side of God. And then we see that this king is ruling and reigning, the one who says he will be with them to the very end of the age. When the disciples went and preached everywhere, note the word everywhere, no place was too dangerous, too poor, too rich, and the Lord worked with him. We are praying for this at St. Stephen's, that the Lord will work with us, and the Lord proved their preaching was true by the miracles that were performed. God is still a God of miracles. When you embark on this mission, when you make disciples and preach the gospel and teach the scriptures, don't be surprised if coincidences happen when you pray. Don't be surprised when your prayers are answered. Because we have the same Holy Spirit that Jesus had, the same Holy Spirit the disciples had. God not, did not give members of St. Stephen's a junior Holy Spirit. You've got the full flame. You've been filled and baptized with the same Holy Spirit. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, St. Stephen's, is go and make disciples. Go and preach the gospel. Do, go and teach the scriptures. Go and cast out demons and heal the sick. Go and make a difference in Rosettenville, the south of Johannesburg, in Hilbra, in Gauteng, and to the ends of the earth. Do you accept this mission?
Let's close as we sang the benediction together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore until Jesus comes again. Have a wonderful week. See you again next week. Let's worship together.